All right, so today we are talking about finding factors of a polynomial and possible rational zeros. So we're just going to go ahead and get started right away. Uh, remainder theorem says, and this is going to sound kind of confusing, but we're going to go through what each piece of this is saying. Um, so don't, don't get overwhelmed here. If a polynomial f of x, so f of x just means the function, so that's talking about this first part right here, 2x squared plus 7x minus 15. So if a polynomial like this, okay, and that's what this is saying, just a general polynomial, is divided by x minus a, so x minus a here is the binomial that it's being divided by, so the x minus a is referring to x plus 5. Now this says x minus a just because usually uh, we find the zero, which would be for negative a would be positive a, right? Um, so if this is a negative, our actual a is going to be positive. And if it's positive in here, actually a is going to be negative. Um, but it's just referring to this x plus 5. So if I divide this by this, then the remainder r is given by r equals f of a. So notice this a and this a match. So r is just talking about the remainder. So if I were to divide, the remainder I get from dividing this by this um, is equal to f of a. That means this function, 2x squared plus 7x minus 15, evaluated at a. So if we take our 0 from this, Okay, if we find our zero, remember we just do that by setting this equal to zero and solving for x. If we take that zero, which in this case would be negative five, and we evaluate this function at negative five, meaning we take out the x's and we put in the negative fives for everywhere there is an x. So two times negative five squared plus seven times negative five minus 15. We're going to get um, a number here, it's going to equal something. That something is the remainder. Okay, so that's what the remainder theorem says. It says if I take the zero from the factor that I'm going to divide the polynomial by um, and plug it in everywhere there's an x, okay, then the result I get is the remainder the same that I would get as if I actually went through and did either long division or synthetic division um, for this problem. Okay. So let's go ahead and evaluate this. Remember, for order of operations, we always do exponents before multiplying. So here we would want to raise negative 5 um, to the second power first before we times by 2. So this would be 2 times 25 because 5, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Um, 7 times negative 5 is negative 35 and then minus 15. So that gives me 15 minus 35 minus 15. 50 minus 35 is 15. So in this case, our remainder is 0. Okay, there is no remainder. So what that tells me is that x plus 5 goes evenly into 2x squared plus 7x minus 15. Okay. Um, yeah, so if I get a 0 there, that means there is no remainder. It would go evenly in. Okay, let's try another one. So we still have our remainder theorem up here. This is exactly the same as the previous slide. So it's just saying if I take the 0, which in this case would be x equals 1, if I take this 1 and I plug it in for the x's up here in the equation, the result I get will be the remainder for actually doing the division. So 3 times 1 squared minus 4 plus 1 cubed. So remember, square before you multiply, so this would be 3 times 1, which is just 3, minus 4, and 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. So again, no remainder, okay, which means that x minus 1 goes evenly into 3x squared minus 4 plus x to the third. So if you were asked, is x minus 1 a factor of 3x squared minus 4 plus x to the cube, I could plug in that zero and if it if I get a zero here then yes it would be a factor because it goes evenly in 
Okay, so yes, x minus 1 is a factor of, well, let's just call it f of x, okay, of this part right here. It is a factor because the remainder is 0, which means it goes evenly in. All right, let's just do another one. So this one is telling us what our x value is. It's saying to evaluate at negative 1. Um, Sometimes it'll say, instead of saying f of negative 1, it'll say for x equals negative 1. Um, if it says x equals negative 1 instead of like x plus 1, then you don't have to change the sign here like you do when it's given in this form. Like if it's got a plus 1, you know you've got to change the sign to find the 0. If it's just telling you what x equals, you don't need to change the sign. You would just keep it exactly the way it is. So I think on your worksheet it's going to say this, x equals negative 1. Um, but another way to say that is f evaluated at negative 1, which just means replace x with negative 1. So let's go ahead and do this. This would be negative 1 cubed minus 2 times negative 1 squared minus 5 times negative 1 minus 3. So this would be negative 1 because negative 1 multiplied together 3 times become, comes out to negative 1. Remember, square here first, so that would be a positive 1 times a negative 2. And negative 5 times negative 1 will make that a plus 5 and then a minus 3. So I have negative 3 plus 5 minus 3, which equals negative 1. So I know that the remainder, when I divide x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 3, would be equal to, sorry, when I divide x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 by x plus 1, right? Because if this is my 0, then this is the factor it came from. So if I divide this by this, the remainder is negative 1. So it would not go evenly in. It would not be a factor. All right, we're going to use synthetic division this time to find out if the divisor, remember this is the divisor, x plus 1, is this a factor of the polynomial? Sometimes we call this just a binomial because it has it's a polynomial with two terms. So if, it's, if it were to say use synthetic division, division to determine if the binomial is a factor of the polynomial equation. That would just mean the exact same thing. We're just going to use our synthetic division that we learned to determine if this is a factor. Now what is a factor again? Remember a factor is like if you have like 10, the factors of 10 are 2 and 5 because 2 and 5 multiply to 10. Um, and 5 is a factor of 10 because 5 divides evenly into 10 with no remainder. So if I want to know if x plus 1 is a factor of this polynomial, I need to divide it in and see if I uh, get a remainder. If I do get a remainder, it is not a factor. It doesn't go evenly in. If I uh, get a zero for a remainder, that means it went evenly in and it is a factor. So similar to what we just did with the remainder theorem, um, but now we're just using a different method, but they're both testing the same thing. So if I use the remainder theorem and plug that zero in and evaluate, if I get 0, I know the remainder is 0, so I know it's a factor. Um, here, I'm just going to actually go ahead and do the division. And if it goes evenly in, then I'm going to know, like if my remainder is 0, I know it went evenly in, and it would be a factor. OK, so remember for synthetic division, I first find the 0 for x plus 1, which would be negative 1, because negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And I put that out here. Then I'm going to take the coefficients from this problem and put them along the top. Remember this box right here under that last number is going to be my remainder. So if that's zero, then I will know this is a, a factor of the polynomial. If it's any other number, then I will know it's not a factor. So pull down the one, negative one times one is negative one. Sum this column, negative two plus negative one is negative three. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. Uh, negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. So in this case, I do have a remainder of negative 1. So I know that x plus 1 is not a factor of f of x. Okay, uh, I could just say no, that's okay. All right, next one. Uh, determine if the following is a factor of the polynomial. Use synthetic division to evaluate. So again, same thing. We're just going to take our 0. We're going to take our coefficients across the top. So 1, 8, 
10 and negative 25. They went down in order, 3, 2, 1, and no x. So I don't need to worry about putting a 0 in there. Negative 5 and 1 is negative 5. Add this together, we get 3. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Sum this column to get negative 5. And negative 5 and negative 5 is 25. I forgot to put my box here, but that's where my remainder would go. There is not a remainder. So yes, it is a factor of the polynomial. All right, so now we're going to talk about something called the rational zero or the rational root theorem. So if we cannot um, factor a polynomial to find the solutions, then we can do this uh, technique using the rational root theorem. And what we do is we take all the factors of the constant in the polynomial. Remember, the constant is the term with no variable. And we divide that by the possible factors of the leading coefficient. That gives us kind of an educated guess of what some of the zeros might be. Remember, the zeros are the solutions to the polynomial. So it may have more than one um, that work. It may have none that work. But it just kind of gives us a starting point of zeros that may actually be factors. In other words, they go evenly into this polynomial. So again, the constant is right here because that does not have any variable with it. And then the leading coefficient, remember if this is in standard form, I have my x to the fourth and then my x to the third and x squared. So this is in standard form. My leading coefficient is the number right in front of the um, first term as long as it's in standard form. So this is my leading coefficient. So remember the previous slide said that we should have factors of the constant over factors of the leading coefficient. So all the factors of the constant here, three, are just one and three. And then all of the, the factors, remember factors just mean they go evenly into that number. And then the factors of the leading coefficient, if it's just one, well, that's just one. Um, so I so I'm going to look at all the different combinations that I can make of fractions with these two things, always keeping the constant factors on the top and the uh, leading coefficient factors on the bottom. So I could have a 1 over 1. I could have a 3 over 1. Okay. But then also, I could also have like a negative 1 and a negative 3 as factors up here. So I may have like negative 1 over 1 and negative 3 over 1. Um, same thing with the bottom number. It could also be a negative 1. But I'm not going to get any new, so I'm not going to get any new factors or new ideas from just having that one negative. Um, because this will either be 1 divided by 1, which is 1, 3 divided by 1, which is 3, or negative 1 divided by 1, which is negative 1 or negative 3 divided by 1, which is negative 3. So these are the four possibilities that could be zeros for this polynomial, meaning that um, if I were to test them with either the um, synthetic division to see if they go in evenly, getting a, or the remainder theorem, getting a remainder of 0, or evaluating to 0 if I plug the x in, um, I would use one of those tests to see which ones are actually zeros, which ones actually go in evenly to the polynomial. So I'm going to actually stop here and I'm going to start a new video. We're going to talk more about the rational zero theorem. We'll just do a, we'll finish this example and then we'll start, we'll do one or two more examples just to kind of get ourselves used to this. Um, so after you finish watching this one, go ahead and watch the next one too.